five six is law of cosines. So if you remember law of sines, we had certain times we could use law of sines, and in terms of our location of our given angles and sines. Um, in law of cosines, again, it's all dependent on location and what you're provided. But again, triangle ABC with sides ABC, respectfully. Law of cosines. Basically, there's one law of cosines but this is three different, written in three different versions, okay, based on what you were given, okay? So the basic law of cosines says, okay, given an angle A, cosine of A, then side A squared is equal to side B squared plus side C squared minus two times side B, side C, cosine of angle A, okay? Same thing can be true, cosine B, then you have B squared, side B squared over here, and A and C are the two pieces right here. And then angle C. When you have angle cosine C, C squared is out here. A squared and B squared and 2AB are your other pieces in there. So they're all three equivalent. It's just written with different letters. I've learned over the years, you guys do better if you can see it in all three forms. Okay. Now, when solving triangles with law of cosines, we are specifically going to be talking about our side angle side and side 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 setup. Okay, um, two setups we did not necessarily talk about with law of cosine or law of sines. Okay, a um, couple of key points. Um, an important key point: the key with solving law of cosines problems is to find the smallest angles first, in order to take into account obtuse angles. So you will always want to, if you have a choice. Find smallest angles first. Okay, it can it can and will make a difference, and it all has to do with how you put it, when you put in your calculator. When you hit that cosine button, it's automatically going to find the quadrant one angle. Well, if that angle is supposed to be obtuse, your calculator is not going to find it. And so the easiest way to find the largest angle is make it the last angle you find, which is the whole subtracting from 180. Okay, and then the trick, so to speak also is that two sides of a triangle must add to be larger than the third. Okay. And that is just, I don't know, I want to say logic. The idea if you have three sides of a triangle, the two shorter sides have to add to be longer than the longest side. Otherwise, it physically cannot make a triangle. Okay. And that will be one of those tricks you have to watch out for. Okay. So, Always check and make sure if you're given three sides, the two shorter sides add to be larger than the third side. And when you're trying to find angles, always start by finding the smallest angle first and then work from there. Okay? So, let's look at example one. With this example, we're going to, it's a, the practice with solving a triangle given side angle side. Now, I can draw a picture. I don't know that a picture is necessary on this other than it will show you that it is side angle side. If I make, I just kind of drew an acute triangle there. Um, if I make angle C 20 degrees, then that means this is going to be side C. And I'm given that B is, is side five, so I'm gonna make that the other shorter side. And side A is 11. So angle A is up top. Angle B is off to the right. Now, what I'm showing you there, is this truly a side angle side situation? Yeah. You can see that we're provided side angle side. Okay, so we've got that. Um, side angle side, as I said. You would not be able to do law of sides here. If you think about it, we can't do law of sines because in order to do law of sines, you have to have a pair. I don't have big A, little a, or big B, little b, or big C, little c. Okay, I don't have any combos there. So with that in mind, this is a law of cosines problem. Now, based on what we're given, angle C, we're given angle C, which means if we're given angle C, which variation are we going to have to use up here? We're going to use that third one there because that's the only option I have right now is we're given angle C. 
So when I have three pieces of information to put in, we're going to plug in angle C, angle side, and angle, or excuse me, angle C, side A, and side B. Now, as beginners, I'm going to write this out and then plug it in. So the idea that we're filling in C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine of C. That's what we're filling in here. Okay, fill in what you know. So little c, I don't know. So we're going to leave it as c squared. a squared is 11 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 11 times 5 times cosine of 20 degrees. Now, I'm going to take this in bits and pieces, but you'll, you'll learn real quick. You can really almost go ahead and put it in the calculator right now. Okay, I'm going to take in bits and pieces because I want to make sure we understand all the math here. In terms of math, well, what do we know? 11 squared is 121. 5 squared is 25. On this next part, we can multiply all that, right? 2 times 11 times 5 times cosine of 20. Well, I'm going to leave cosine of 20 as cosine of 20 for right now, so I'm ready to plug it all into the cap there. But what is 2 times 11 times 5? One ten times cosine of 20 degrees. And, you know, I'm kind of working through this, too, because there's right ways and wrong ways. What is a cleanup step we can take here. What can we put together? Okay, 121 plus 25 is going to be 146. Can I do 146 minus 110? No, because 110 is attached to the cosine of 20. That's a mistake that's going to be made. Don't make it. Okay, you cannot subtract those. At this point, you have to hit the calculator. Because do we know cosine of 20 degrees? No, that's a calculator button. Okay. Now, you're going to put that in the calculator. And you're going to get some lovely number. And it's going to be equal to C squared. How are we going to find C? You're going to take the square root. So I'm going to write down that C is going to be equal to the square root of 146 minus 110 cosine of 20 degrees. And I have my answer to one decimal place. And it appears I'm, well, mostly consistent. We get to some word problems. I do. I have C is approximately 6.5. Do we have the calculators cooperating with us? Yes. Okay. Now, could we argue that back here on step one, could you have gone ahead and put that into the calculator if you wanted to? It is possible. Okay. In fact, you could have as soon as you filled everything in, gone ahead and done the square root of 11 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 11 times 5 times cosine of 20. You can play around with that. That works as well. I'm always going to do at least a little bit of work, okay, just to know what we're doing here. Okay, that gives us side C. Now, we need to practice. We need to find an angle. We have angle A and angle B left to find. What do you want to do? Well, we're either finding angle A or angle B. 
there is a particular one we need to find before the other. Which one? And why? You have more that you can plug into the equation? Well, technically, I mean, at this point, we can find angle A or angle B. We have enough information to use. However, there's one that's going to keep us safe and one that could get us a wrong answer. Nope, you're so, and that is, I will say, we can't get away. We're going to have to use side C here. But back up here, what did I comment? You have to find smallest angle first. We have two angles to find. We have angle A and we have angle B to find. Which one's going to be the smaller angle? And angle B, not because it's how I drew my picture, but because why? I mean, I drew it as a small angle, but that that's not necessarily the reason why. Why is a, How do I know angle B is going to be smaller than angle A? Okay. Angle B is across from a smaller side than angle A, yes? That means angle A is going to be a larger angle because it's across from a larger side. Fair enough? So for that reason, we need to find B before A. Okay? So in order to find angle B, which version of law of cosines am I going to use? Well, we're going to use the only one that has an angle B in it. So we're going to use the cosine B if we're trying to find angle B. So let me write this out as B squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. Okay, this is one you can't just plug all in at the couch there right from the beginning. So, okay, b, what do we know about b? b is 5 squared equals a squared, so 11 squared, plus c squared which is 6.5, and I do just use the rounded 6.5, okay, minus 2 times A, which is 11, times C, which is 6.5, cosine of angle B. Okay, do some math steps here. Again, unfortunately, we can't just plug it all into the calculator right now. Um, what's 5 squared? 25 equals 11 squared, which is 121, plus what's 6.5 squared? 42.25 minus 2 times 11 times 6.5, 143, cosine B. Okay? You obviously will figure out which steps you want to combine. I'm going step by step here. What can I clean up on the right? Okay. Add these two like num just plain numbers. 121 plus 42.25 is 163.25. Still minus 143 cosine B. Okay, are you with me at this point? Okay. What are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for B right here, yes? So your job is to get angle B by itself. What am I going to do first to get angle B by itself? Okay, so we're going to take, we're working to get B by itself, which means we have to work to get this B term by itself. So we're trying to get this minus 143 cosine B by itself. So we are going to subtract the 163.25 to the other side. And I don't necessarily always write this step in, but again, we're beginners. What is 25 minus 163.25? 
138.25, and that's going to be equal to negative 143 cosine B. Okay. Okay. Next job to getting B by itself is to get cosine B by itself. Now, when I go to get cosine B by itself, and I divide by negative 143, me personally, I'm not putting this in my calculator quite yet. You can. I just don't want to write down that big ugly decimal it's going to be. So what I know at this point, and I'm going to reverse this, is that cosine B is equal to whatever negative 138.25 divided by negative 143 is. Fair enough? And if you want to go ahead and write that decimal down, that's fine. Just don't shorten it. Use the whole number in your calculator when you do the calculations. Okay? Okay. Digging those pre-spring break brains. How do we find B? We had to do this at times in Law of Signs. Inverse. Right now, B is the input. This fraction is the output. How do I switch my input and output? We use the inverse. So in order to find angle B, we're going to do cosine inverse of negative 138.25 over negative 143. Make sure you practice with the calculators. Know what you're doing here. Remember, cosine inverse is second and the cosine button, right? Of that fraction. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Could I have dropped those negatives off? I could have. In fact, now that I look at my notes, I did. Is our calculator giving us an answer? I do have 14.8 degrees. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, no one mentioned it at the time. We could have thrown the idea out there. I wouldn't have accepted it. But we could have thrown the idea out there that in order to find angle B, we technically could have gone back to law of signs and using law of signs at this point. Okay. You can... Once you get law of cosine started, you can mix and match and put some law of sines in there. In terms of, we would have had C's, right? We had big C, little c. In order to find B or A, you could have done law of sines. Now, not what I'm going to teach because I want us, we're, our job is to learn how to use the law of cosines right now. Okay, but if someone says to you or if you see something, you could technically use law of sines to find that angle there. Okay. We just couldn't have started this problem with law of signs. Am I done? No. No. How do I fi finish this problem off? Find a or angle. And how do we find angle A? 180 minus 20 minus 14. Okay. Angle A is the third angle in the triangle. Well, yes. Well, no. You can't even really do law of cosines because it's going to be an obtuse. And your calculator is not going to give you that. So... In my notes, I have it over here. I don't have room over here, so wherever you want to put it, we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180. So, what? A plus 14.8 plus 20 has to equal 180. What are you getting A to be? 145.2. Okay, so that's angle A and angle B. Okay, guys. That's an example of side angle side. As I said, you could mix some law of signs in there once you got going. Um, I did a lot of steps 
you definitely can shorten up your steps in terms of what you go ahead and just put into the calculator and whatnot. Okay, questions on example one here? Okay, well, example two takes us into triangles that use side, side, side. So with that in mind, Solve triangle ABC, given that A is 7.7, .7, B is 4.5, and C is 19.5. Thoughts? Uh, draw a triangle, and your bottom is going to be C because it's the biggest side. Okay. In other words, if you draw a triangle like what I had set up last time, yeah. what you're looking at. Okay. So if we draw a triangle like such, and mine are never exactly right, but C is the large 19.5. Um, mine's not drawn right. A is 7.7. .7, B is 4.5. Okay. We have a problem. Yeah. Okay. My try. I just draw the triangle and fill in the sides. Can this physically make a triangle? No. And think about it. Can this 7.7 .7 and this 4.5 going up at an angle, even if it's the slightest angle, can they meet if my bottom side is 19.5? They can't. Okay, so while I can draw I can draw a triangle and put any numbers I want on it, this one won't actually work. Okay, and the idea is that the two smaller sides, in this case A and B, would need to be greater than C. And in our case, 7.7 .7 plus 4.5 would need to be greater than 19.5. And... What do we have here? 12.2, I think, is not greater than 19.5. Okay. That is not happening. Okay. This triangle I attempted to draw doesn't really legitimately work. And so your response here, this is not a triangle. Okay, not a triangle, and the comment I'm going to write is that two, two shorter sides must add to be larger than the third side, or I don't even have to say two, but two sides must add to be longer or larger. Then the third side. Okay. So your two sides must add to be larger than the third side, or the two shorter sides. Okay. Always check. Are they gonna throw those in at you? They will on occasion. So always beware. And I mean, you know, really, did I give us enough room to do the work on that problem? No, I didn't give you enough room to do the work on that problem because I knew. So then I was trying to give us room for a B. Now, I have B on another slide because I have room today, so giving myself more room. Okay, B. Solve triangle ABC given that A is 9, B is 7, and C is 5. With that in mind, we are again looking at a side, 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 yes? What should we start off checking? Yeah. So do my two smaller sides, which what are my smaller sides? 
7 plus 5. Is that greater than 9? Okay, this time it works, yes? This time it will physically make a triangle. Not that you have to write that check down, but that's my mental check of, okay, I can do this. I'm not going to be wasting my time doing all the math now. And I'm glad you guys caught that last one. I didn't want to start doing math out on that one. Okay. So we're given three sides, which means we have to start off finding an angle. What angle would you like to find? The smaller angle. Okay. You need to find your smaller angles first. Okay. Technically, since we have to find all three, you can find either of the two smaller angles, but easy rule is just always start off with the smallest angle. Which one's my smallest angle? Okay. C is the shortest side, so that is going to give me the smallest angle. So, which variation of law of cosines am I using from above? The one that has c squared and has cosine c in it. Okay. So, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Fill it in. 5 squared equals 9 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 9 times 7 times cosine of C. 5 squared is 25, 9 squared is 81, 7 squared is 49, Minus 2 times 9 times 7. So minus 126 cosine of C. Okay, that's just doing all my basic math out. I personally go ahead and add 81 and 49. You wouldn't have to here. You could just go ahead and subtract them over. You guys will find your own ways. Um, let's see, 81 and 49 is 130 minus 126 cosine C. Okay, you guys tell me, what are you doing here? You may be ahead of me, but... Uh, the inverse. I'm not quite there yet. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm going to subtract the 130 over. If I subtract the 130 over... 25 minus 130 is negative 105. Okay. Since I have negative 105 equals negative 126 cosine C, divide by the negative 126. And then I'm going to write it as cosine C is equal to now. What is a negative divided by a negative? We know that to be positive. So you could go ahead and say that this is equal to 105 over 126. You don't have to keep the negatives. And then since it's cosine C, how do I find C? We're going to do the inverse. So C is going to be cosine inverse of 105 over 126. Obviously, calculators are in degrees, but they have been this whole chapter, so I'm not too concerned about that. 33. 33 point what? Six. Okay. 33.6 degrees as angle C. Okay. What's next? Okay, you need to find angle B because here's the chance. Angle A could be obtuse. If angle A is obtuse, that's a problem. Okay, it, law of cosines isn't going to find it. Okay, now, if it's not obtuse, you could use law of cosines with all of these. Okay, so if we're finding angle B, then that means I'm using the law of cosines that has... Starts with B squared equals A squared 
plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine of b. Okay. Same process as last time, right? Are some of you guys already done with this one? 7 squared equals 9 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 9 times 5 times cosine of b. Um, let's see. 49 equals 81 plus 25 minus... 90 cosine B. If you want to go ahead and just subtract those two over to 49, you can. I'm going to go ahead and add them. 49 is going to equal 106 minus 90 cosine B. And then if you haven't, subtract that 106 over. 49 minus 106 is negative... 57, and that's going to equal negative 90 cosine B, and then you are dividing to get cosine B by itself, so cosine B is going to be equal to whatever 57 divided by 90 is, and a negative divided by negative is a positive. Notice that's usually what's happening there, yes? If you get a different situation where it's not a two negatives equaling a positive, then go back and check your work because you should be getting the two negatives equaling a positive here. Okay, and how did you find B? Cosine inverse of 57 over 90. And what is angle B? 50.7. Okay. And? Angle A. What about angle A? Okay. All three angles in a triangle add up to be 180. So angle A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. So angle A plus 50.7 plus 33.6 degrees equals 180. And what is angle A? I'm like, I know it's 95.7. I don't remember that piece either. Okay, there we go. 95.7. Okay. We're getting the idea of law of cosines. Yeah. Okay. Look to the back when you're ready. And we're going to look at a few ways to use law of cosines. Well, one way to use law of cosines. And then we're going to look at a few variations that come from law of cosines, but other little formulas we're going to use. Okay. Example three. The bases on a baseball diamond are 90 feet apart, and the front edge of the pitcher's mound, pitcher's mound is 60.5 feet from the back corner of home plate. Find the distance from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's mound to the far corner of first base. Okay. Now, that was nice. I went ahead and gave us a diamond. Tried to, at least. Okay, what do we know? The bases on a baseball diamond are 90 feet apart. Okay, easy enough, right? That means each of these sides are 90 feet apart. Okay. Are we baseball challenging here? Do we know what we're talking about? Where's home plate? Got home plate right here, right? And then we've got first, second, and third, if you want to think about where the bases are, right? 
Okay, so the base of the line baseball diamond are 90 feet apart. The front edge of the pitcher's mound. Yeah, I feel like my diamond is lopsided here. Maybe it's just me, but okay. In the middle. Now, keep in mind. I'm debating how I want to say this, but we've got a pitcher's mound right here somewhere like that, right? It's a little big in reference, isn't it? But it is what it is. And it is what? 60.5 feet from the back corner of home plate. So what are we looking at here? From the back corner of home plate to the pitchers, to the front edge of the pitcher's mound. That right there is 60.5. Okay. Find the distance from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's mound, so this right here, to the far corner of first base. Now, we figure out what we know. Obviously, we know two sides, yes? And we are trying to find this distance here. So we know two sides. We're trying to find a third side. What else do we know? No. Depends where, where you're talking about. Right there. Uh, but the home, the, 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 the home the home. That's what I meant. So, it's not necessarily. You know what? I don't know. Okay. And here's the deal. Is pitcher's mound directly on a line between first and third? It's not. And that's the thing. Where do our brains automatically put it when we start drawing it in? On that line. And I, try, I sometimes try and make mine a little bit farther forward. But it's not necessarily on a straight line. So... This right here is not necessarily a 90 degree angle. Okay, so, and what, okay, so, yeah, if you think about it, at home and first, those are 90 degree, at all four angle bases, right? Those are 90 degree angles, yes? Yes. Now, which one do we know we're cutting in half? This one that goes from pitcher's mound to home is going straight from the center of pitcher's mound straight to the back of the home plate. This one right here is being cut in half. So if we take this 90 degree angle and cut it in half, what does this make this? 45. Now, as much as we want to say first is being cut in half also, for the same reason this is not 90, this is not being cut in half. Okay. Now, with that in mind, what did we just create here? Side angle side. Now, if you know enough, fill it into your formula. If you want some labels, I'm guessing some of you guys want some labels. If we fill in some labels and it doesn't really matter what you label what, um, in mine I have first is A, pitcher's mound is B, Home plate is C. That means I'm trying to find side C. I know side A is 60.5, and I know side B is 90. Okay? And then it is a matter of filling into your law of cosines, yes? Which you guys can start tomorrow at the beginning of class. Since we're trying to find C, and we know angle C, we will be using C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. I would expect you guys to have some work time tomorrow. Come prepared.